Laura, so nice to meet you. How are you today? I'm great, Lauren. Lovely to talk to you. How are you? Good. Lovely to talk to you, too. I watched this film weeks ago, and I didn't look up anything about the film prior to watching it. And just by the end, I was full-blown sobbing just at the end. So first of all, congratulations to you. I, I truly believe this is one of the best documentaries I've ever seen, honestly. Wow. Wow. Well, that's that's a lot. Um, thank you. Yeah, it was a story that really, really touched me from the very from the word go uh, learning that like a just like there was people that could do this, you know, that could hold their breath underwater for like three, four or five, six, seven, eight, nine minutes and kind of like behave more like a dolphin than a human. So that was amazing. But then really like learning about Stephen and Alessia's story, Alessia being like this champion freediver who had this burning passion from such a young age and and kind of like, you know, uh, even though people kind of maybe didn't really believe that she could do it, she just quietly kept working at it for years and years and years and years and years. Um, and then Stephen being like this wandering, uh, wandering soul who was searching for something entirely different, but he couldn't quite put his finger on it. And watching the two of them come together, it just was like time and time again, like a surprising and beautiful story. Yeah. It was because, first of all, I learned so much about the sport and how dangerous the sport was. But then learning about this beautiful love story of these two humans connecting because of their love of deep diving. Honestly, my first question for you is how long can you hold your breath? Underwater? Oh, God, I don't, I've, I've never tied myself. I've never tied myself. But actually, when I was at, um, at the Blue Hole, we had a few safeties around and uh, they they watched me as I went. They said, go see, see what you can do. And I, I actually pulled myself down on the rope to about three meters, Lauren. Okay. Um, that's my personal best currently. That's pretty good, though. I mean, like, I, I think that's pretty yeah. good. <laughs> no, uh, but like, it's the it's the pressure. It was the pressure in my ears because you have to equalize. You kind of have to push the air out of your ears like you're on a plane, you know, when your ears pop. And it just I couldn't do that. So the pressure got really nice. Turn around and come back up. But I thoroughly enjoyed those three meters. I love that. The cinematography is absolutely incredible. I've truly never seen anything like this in an underwater setting in a film before. How did that work for you as a director? And then also when in post-production editing everything together, how did the camera setup work? And then how did you, I know that that they had their own cameras filming, you know, years and years ago, and then you kind of stepped in. So how did that work with filming and then in the editing process for you? Yeah, I suppose some like there was a wealth of archive that we could draw on. Some of it was shot on underwater drones. Some of it was shot by free diving cinematographers, scuba diving cinematographers, tech diving cinematographers down much lower. Um, and for me, it was important to try and get every frame from the day of, of the story. So once we spoke to everybody over the course of probably about a year and a half and really kind of figured out what the story was, then it was about going out there and seeing like what is available, um, what exists, what was shot, um, if anything, of, of some of these scenes. So that was kind of our way in. And sometimes we'd have like a photo, like one photo from an event, but there'd be somebody in the background of that photo that looked like, is that person holding a camera? Is it a Mars bar? I'm not sure. Let's see. And like um, we would reach out to say one of the people there and they'd say that's Stefano and we get in touch with Stefano and he'd have like 500 gigs on a hard drive somewhere. And that just kept, kept happening over and over again. It was quite incredible. Um, so we we t thoroughly like leaned on material that was for, from each moment, each day. But after that, it was about um, plugging in the gaps ourselves. So mm -hmm. we had quite a fine cut before we went and shot any other underwater material. Um, and that was that was we storyboard it very, you know, and, and figure out where on the planet can we get a shot that isn't necessarily at the depth of 50 or 70 metres but kind of can feel like it's part of the material that already exists. So we filmed in in Dahab at the Blue Hole. We filmed in Bahamas at the Dean's Blue Hole at Vertical Blue there. We filmed mm -hmm. in Cenote in Mexico um, and out in the in the Caribbean Sea as well. And um, and we filmed with underwater cinematographers who were also freedivers. So they would be holding their breath and so able to go up and down um, and and it was just about weaving that material in and shooting it in a way that 
that reflected the other material that was shot on the day. And our editor, Julian Hart, was just like incredibly um, patient and with an incredible eye for detail um, when it came to the, the material that we shot and also the archive that we had. I think that it was done beautifully. Laura, they are wrapping me. I could chat with you about this film for another hour. But again, congratulations to you on this beautiful documentary. I thought it was so moving and so educational. And like I said, I love the love story part of it too. And it was just, it's just really interesting to see, especially Alessia's point of view at the end as well. So again, congratulations to you. And like I said, I cannot wait for audiences to see this. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks a million. Lovely talking to you. Lovely talking to you too, Laura. Bye. Bye.